it's another temple dog. Uh, this one is a variation on a on a Highlander, uh, and this is as well, most of my fleas. I usually name them after the people that commission them. So this is a Dunsmuir's Highlander. So I have a a bit of fluorescent yellow or fluorescent green uh, plastic outer tube in here, and then the 1.8 black inner. So I'm going to lay on a little bit of uh, adhesive lead cut in like a little diamond shape on the underneath here and that'll give us a little bit of weight but it'll make the fly swim on an even keel hopefully. So we'll wrap that on it's on the underneath side up here where the thorax the dubbed part will cover. So travel backwards here we're going to have a portion here to hold the hook and then we're going to have uh, tip and tag and butt section. So here I have a, a medium uh, mirage, opal mirage. What I'm going to do is tie the short end of it in that way and you'll see why in a reason in a second. Flip over that and then Wrap on a few wraps of that to create our butt section, or our tip section. Trim that off. And because this stuff's fairly slippy slidey, uh, and also so is the tube, that could slide back. So this short end that we had here, I'm going to pull it forward and tie it down. And that will create like a little, almost like a shell back or a, a thorax cover. and that will prevent these wraps here from sliding backwards. Now, I'm going to use a fluorofiber, an orange fluorofiber here for the tail. So I'll take out a, a bunch of that. So what you do is take out a bunch that's half the thickness of the intended tail, because what we're going to do is tie that on uh, tying it on maybe a, th a bit less than half of our length uh, as the first part because I want this bit longer and I fold it back over the top and you can see then that's why we wanted half the thickness because we're doubling it over then if we go from underneath hold this and sort of trim from underneath and then a few on top and what we're trying to end up with is a, a little bit of a taper within our tail. Right, so now I'm going to take a, a bit of, this is Spectra Dub by Hands, this is a black one. I'm taking a little bunch of that. You could use uh, wool, you could use uh, peacock hurl or ostrich hurl or something like that there. But this stuff, if you get it twist it on will form a nice tight little dubbin rope and then we'll wrap that on top of itself to create our our butt section there. So next we want to get in a rib. A variety of different things you could use wire, uh, you could use braid, uh, if you're going to use oval this here happens to be a uni French uh, silver in a large because I want something that's real strong and also given the size of the fly you want something like a little, little, little bit thicker that's going to show so tie that in underneath and leave ourselves a little bit of a, you know, a nice flat uh, underbody there so next thing we want some holographic silver braid. This is a uh, quite a thick one, it's probably about five mil or so because it's a big play. So 
So I'll tie that on. Sort of on the underside. Wrap back as far as the butt section and then come back forward again. Take a little bit of care with the first turn of it, just so it's nice and tight up to the back of the butt. Then I want it, I'm pulling it into itself and I'm slightly overlapping it. And I'm doing a little bit over half of the body in that. Then when I tie it in I fold it back on itself and trim that off. And uh, now our dubbed section, what I've done here is I've created a, a mix of yellow light bright green crystallina fibers, highlander green seals fur and we'll end up with a sort of a, a half synthetic half natural dubbing and that helps it to twist itself and catch. The, uh, the seal that's in it will help with the depth of colour and the synthetic stuff will add the flash. Wrap that forward and I'll add little bits if necessary to get me out towards the front of my uh, outer tubing there. So you can give that a little bit of a, a roughen to get some of the bits of it sticking out. And then we're going to palmer a hackle down the, the body section. So for this I'm going to go with this which is a chartreuse dyed uh, badger cape. Sure. This is our hackle. Uh, now, what I tend to do when I'm doing this is uh, so this is the good side. So essentially, that's going to be tied on and wrapped this way. So this bit here, I'm going to strip all that off because I find if you don't it leaves too much bulk over uh, the body section for my liking for just for the way it swims so I do that just for aesthetic reasons but also I think it aids the way that it moves in the water so we're going to hammer this back over Our, uh, our dubbed body section and years ago whenever I was tying them I always struggled with the idea of taking that the whole way back and it, it just didn't fit with a sort of a teardrop shape to me so of late I've started to stop at, uh, at that point you know, just onto the, the tinsel section and I think to me it gives a, a more pleasing look. So we're going to wrap our tinsel up through our hackle and then catch that in and snap off the hackle at the rear there. So plastic tubing tends to flex so I'm always worried about having short tie-in points so uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to snip this off and then I'm going to super glue my tie-in thread there and wrap over that just to make sure it shouldn't pull out so now uh, time for to start the winging so the first portion I'm going to use here is uh, this is an American opossum uh, but it's quite a spiky yard hair portion of it and I've bleached that and then I dyed it a hot orange uh, you could also use something like polar bear here because you want just something a little bit stiffer than the fox to give us a bit of support for that first bit of the wing so I'm going to trim the ends of that square and then put a little bit of super glue just to the end of it, set that on to that tie-in point. 
because I don't want to be building a lot of bulk as I go forward there. And tie that in. Sure. Now we want to get a little bit of flash. So what I'm going to use here is a little bit of Mirage in a sort of yellow or olive colour. A strand of that and a strand of like a, a golden olive or green sort of holographic tinsel. I'm going to lay that back a little bit longer than that underwing portion and double it back and trim both off to the same length. Yeah. Next uh, we're going to go a yellow fox portion. So I'm going to search for a bit of that. Set that on to be maybe half as long again as the uh, as the orange portion that went before it, and I want it to be a little bit more enveloping of the top of the shank than that because we're trying to build up a a teardrop shape here. So trim that off, and again. A little bit of super glue into the cut ends of that and wrap it down before it sets. So we'll begin with uh, the head hackles. So here I'm going to use this as a fluorescent yellow dyed soft hackle. that it'll take me over this step that we've created and I was short soft hackles are always short so you tend to get two or three turns of them at most that has just taken me over onto our level tubing again I'll tie that back just to hold it in place and then we want to go for a chartreuse portion of fox, so here we have one that was dyed a sort of a chartreuse or kelly green. Take a bunch of that. And take out the shorter yard hairs of this. And this is going to go on a little bit longer than the yellow portion. I want it just to splay out a little bit across the, the top of the fly there. Trim that. Super glue into our thread. Wrap that in to set into that and hold it in place. Together. You see we're aiming for this sort of tapering and teardrop shape. So I'm now going to take a, a strand of uh, Mirage. This is a black peacock Mirage. Double it over to make two strands and set that out to the length of the wing. Tie it in, fold it back on itself so we now have four strands and then split the loop that was formed of that. Four strands sitting on top. And then just to accentuate the sort of taper and we're changing colour here, uh, I'm going to take a bit of black goat. Now this is a fine sort of cashmere goat. Trim that off and get rid of the shortest of the underfur there. 
we're going to set that out to the intended full length of the fly. Set that up on top. And I'm not too worried about this one splaying out much around it because I want it to, I'm going to put another black portion on top, the shorter portion. So uh, this is mainly just to give that central length core and a tip. Take a few uh, strands of peacock curl here. Just gonna line the tips of them up, and then I'm gonna set them on. But I don't want them the full length of our wing. So the wing is actually then going to you know support them a little bit. Tie them in on top of that. Next we're going to add a couple of jungle cock feathers here. I'm going to take a couple of these sort of long thin ones. I'm going to tie in on these second white portions because they're enamel uh, and they have a flat sort of shape. They'll stay where you want them to be. Whereas if you tie in on bare stock with jungle cock because of the shape of it, it will want to twist on you. So fold that back. Nick that off. Glue our thread. Wrap over that. We're getting towards the end of this. So now what I want to do is take a, this is a cock pheasant rump feather, which I've dyed black, like I suppose heron idea, and that's going to create like a, sort of like a soft hackle, but a little bit spikier, so I suppose a spay hackle front to this, so I'll double it over, tie it in by the tip. Flick it back. Then I want to get a wrap on top of that tie in point, and then I want to start to move forward to drop down onto the actual blank inner again. And I'll tie that off. Flip it back. Now here I'm trying to create as small a head as possible because we're going to go with a hybrid cone. So the last thing that we want to do here is just to take uh, a bit of black fox or a little bit of black temple dog or something like that there because we just want to neaten up the, the top of it. So I'm going to take a little bunch of that there. Now Temple Hound tends to be very soft so what I'm going to do here is I'm just I'm looking for the curvature of it which is this way so I'm going to flip that over in reverse. Catch the tips of that in this hand and get one wrap across it to hold it. Let it stick out the front. Super glue your tie in thread. Wrap into that and then fold it back. And then one wrap across it. And that is the tying of the fly complete. I'll just comb that into 
to it. Now you could uh, complete your flay there if you wanted just by varnishing up the head. Uh, what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to add a little hybrid type cone to it. So I'm going to put a silver one on this to match the, match the rear body section. Just going to set that there. And for this I'm going to use a super glue gel. Get a blob of super glue gel there just at the head. Set that on, let it go back into it and it'll take the gel with it. And then I just give it a bit of a twist so that it goes the whole way around. Force it back into the hackle. Trim off the inner, leaving two mil, say. And now we need to take a lighter, hold this vertically, and flame it down. And that gives us real nice, soft top section. You can see the sort of tapered shape to it there. And from underneath the spay hackle sort of continues with the flow. So there we have a Dunsmuir's Highlander. <laughs>